Good evening, YouTube. How are you? Hope you guys are having a wonderful night. It is a bit late here. It's after 10. The peepers are softly singing outside and Booger's up here with me. I guess she decided to uh, camp out on my lap a little bit. She's a bit of an old lady, so right now she's trying to persuade me to go to bed. <laughs> This is her way to try to get me to go to bed. She's going to lay on me until I finally go to bed. But I am not ready to go to bed. I want to sit up and react to Chantal. Chantal did a live earlier called Coffee Bees. And I was trying to react to it. But due to the audio just being so awful, I decided to scrap it. I There's a lot of you on my channel that you use headphones and earbuds and it just would have been too much for you there are some things of note about the coffee bees live stream that people have pointed out during the live stream Chantal mentioned an Amazon wish list and she was trying to get people to buy stuff off the wish list here are my thoughts about that I really don't see the sense in anybody buying anything off of her Amazon wish list that might be house related or apartment related if she doesn't have a place yet. What is the point of getting apartment stuff or house stuff if the person doesn't have a place already that they're living in or they're about ready to move into? If you want my thoughts about why she's trying to urge people to buy stuff off her wish list, knowing Foodie, she would just get the stuff and then turn around and sell it. Or she would ask for a refund. It's just another way for her to scam money out of people. If you guys think back to all the many things that she's done in the past to get money in hand, let's see. She did an OnlyFans twice both times she set up the memberships she really didn't put up content people really weren't happy with that she set up a twitch channel immediately set up memberships and then didn't do content after that then she had the postcard club said she would send postcards out if she traveled that never happened although people did pay a good amount of money what else did she do? Oh, yeah. There was also the community post that she did. There was a big storm in her area. And she made this post and said, oh, Pete's and I and the cats, we have to go to a motel. Anything you guys can send is fine. Although she and Pete's and the cats didn't have to leave the villa. They were perfectly fine. The power was out for a few hours, but then it came right back on. So she's got a history of scamming money out of people. The feeling on the street is she might go back to Kuwait. She really, really wants to go back. She can't right now for some reason. And either A, she's got money in hand and she's just wanting to scam other people out of their money and spend it first. Or B, She's really broke and just, just trying to get money any way she could think of. But Chantal lies. Chantal tells on herself. So I am of the mind that I am not going to believe that Chantal is moving into a place until I actually see it happen. Now, on this live stream I'm about to react to, Chantal's whining and crying about adulthood and Oh, woe is me. Chantal, I don't want to hear the woe is me crap. I, you knew going into this that you would not be able to stay in Kuwait forever. You're actually lucky that you got to stay as long as you did, considering the number of times that you were going back and forth and how frequently. But you decided, you did, to pull up all of your roots in Canada to spend all of your money on takeout, to give your money to a useless guy, and then you expect the general public, people that earn far less than you, to give up their hard-earned money to compensate you for your stupidity? 
I, I can't describe to you guys how wrong I think that is. And there's an old saying. If you give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. If you teach a man to fish, he'll eat for the rest of his life. Chantal, in her life, she's always had people around her to compensate for her stupidity. That coddled her, that paid for her mistakes. I think it's time she started to pay for her own mistakes. Then she can start learning. Then she can start growing. Then she can start being an adult. As long as she's a 40-year-old woman being coddled like a child, she's going to act like a child. She's going to think like a child. Well, it's time for the child to absolutely grow up because ain't nobody got time or money to take care of her. So, a little something of interest. Foodie, right now, she's looking for a place to stay. She's complaining about lack of money. Maybe she's running into the fact that uh, she's got bankruptcies on her record. She's got bad credit, little money to work with. Chantal, I know you hate girl world, but I wanted to be helpful. I went online and I looked around to see if there was a place that you could stay. The idea that I put forward on panel last night with House of Hannibal is that you could stay in a motel and rent by the week. You know, like just a temporary place to stay. There are motels out there that rent by the week. Maybe you could find something on the lower end, work out some deal since you are staying there for a week, and then just get things started. I mean, you and Nat are used to go to SCSI hotels. I'm sure that they could rent by the week. They'd be very happy to take your money. But if you don't want to do that, I found what I feel is the perfect option for you. And it doesn't cost very much. The only downside is you will probably be around other people, but it is a space and they offer free breakfast and Wi-Fi. I mean, there's some of your needs covered. So let me just show you what I found. Just a quick search. Let me share the screen with you. And you guys are going to love this. Oh, it's so perfect for foodie. It's so perfect. So what are we looking at? Well, I looked for places in Ottawa, and apparently there is a place in Ottawa called St. Lowe Ottawa Jail Hostel. So it is a hostel, and it's a jail that was converted into a hostel, and please, no one reach out and bother them. But what a fun idea, you know, to go to a hostel that used to be a jail. <laughs> I mean, Chantal, you're looking for content. You're looking for content ideas. I mean, the, the jokes will just fly all day long. Foodie Beauty is in jail. <laughs> and it's only $29 a night. And it's got a very high guest rating. So what are the options here for Foodie? Uh, we've got the $29 a night option. Uh, a bed and a 10 bed mixed dormitory room. You've got a single bed in an eight bed mixed dormitory room. That's just a little bit higher. You've got the single cell room. That's $52 a night. That's actually pretty cheap. And the price includes breakfast, Chantal. Check that out. So not only can you stay there, but you'll get at least one free meal out of it. And I know you're always looking for that. You get the twin cell room, a double cell room, a single bed in a four bed female dormitory that's sold out. But there are some cheaper options, uh, activities and things to do. You get the pub crawls, movie nights, board games and puzzles, outdoor recreation. You got hiking and gardening, uh, sanitation. They got the linens, towels and laundry. I mean, it sounds pretty decent. I'm not going to lie to y'all. When I saw this listing, I thought, it sounds like fun to me. That would sound like an experience. Can you imagine <laughs> being a YouTuber and going to a place like this? How much fun it would be? Like the jokes would fly all day long. I can say, I can say that I went to jail. <laughs> but there you go, foodie. There you go. You're looking for a place to go. It would be a roof over your head. 
it's cheap there's free breakfast wi-fi what more do you need what more do you need ma'am there you go you can stay at a jail hostel i think that would be great for you i really think that would be great for you but aside from the suggestion let's go on to twitter because there are some interesting things on twitter that i would like to show you just some interesting tidbits Fun stuff, pretty stuff, foodie stuff. And I'm trying to do all this with Booger in my arms. She's taking her little nap. Okay, so where are we? This is from Oh Things To Do. Simply amazing. Oh, I love it already. You got this beautiful, funky, hippie, boho house right next to the water. Can I move in tomorrow, please? And roses too? Oh, I'm so there. I love it. I absolutely love it. Where, where is this place? I need to move in. All right. Liz Erd says, oh, heck nah. That selfish beast wants us to furnish a second apartment while she funds Salah's apartment? No, ma'am. Salah has his own business. Let him buy your wish list, unless you're lying about that. Tara Lee says, did I hear right? Is Chantal starting an Amazon wish list? The nerve. Yeah, the absolute nerve. After she was in Kuwait and she sat there buying takeout, tons of takeout, doing those doggone grocery hauls day after day after day, spending all that money on all that useless food, most of which I'm sure went to waste. She wants us to compensate her for her stupidity. She has the nerve to go to the general public, people who have far less money than she's got, and beg for money. And she's not even being discreet about it. She's outright begging, not dry begging, straight up wet begging. Yep, she sure is. That happened in the coffee bees. Uh, nothing but love says, if she gets Sam back, I think that's my time to exit out of this mess. I can't watch her with a cat that she neglected for years. I just can't. I, I seriously doubt she's going to get Sam back. I, I really do. Let's see Chantal get into her own place first. Let's see that actually happen. She's going to have a hard time. I mean, given her bankruptcy her bad credit, her lack of money, that's going to make it hard for her to find a place, first of all. And then if you're someone and you're trying to find a place that allows pets, that makes it even harder. And that's any pets. They usually require a pet deposit, which means more money, money she doesn't have right now. Uh, whoever has Sam, whether it's a family friend or a true foster, why would they give Sam back after spending all that money for his medical care, taking him to the vet, having him shaved down to get rid of the dander and, and the mats? Why would somebody spend all that money just to say, oh, it used to be your pet. Here you go. I can't see anybody doing that. On that note, something of note. She keeps talking about Sam. I'm getting Sam back. Okay, so you are now back in Canada and you've been in Canada for more than a few days. If you have access to your cat, why haven't you showed your cat? Why are there no pictures? Why is there no video? If he matters that much to you, wouldn't you rush right over there and take the pictures and the video? I would think so. How come we haven't seen any kind of proof that she's got access to Sam? Here's what I think. I don't think she has any access to him at all. She's just lying to get attention, to trigger people, to get people to watch, to see if she gets Sam. That's what I think. I don't think she can get Sam back. She's a big old liar. Okay, this is from Day to Day Ray. And also courtesy of the channel, Are You Serious? Uh, day to day Ray says, I really like Are You Serious's theory, and it coincides with one of Neo Tarot's readings, if you believe in that stuff. I wanted to tag Are You Serious, but couldn't remember her handle. 
Hope she doesn't mind that I clipped this, but I found it interesting and wanted to share and show the love. Now, the readings and the reading that Day Today is referring to, there is a tarot channel called Neo Tarot. You guys have heard me talk about Neo Tarot. Neo Tarot, she's got the gift. And she's done readings on foodie. And in more than one reading that Neo did on foodie, she saw and she read that foodie would be approached by a older male figure and a older female figure. And they would essentially just lay the law down to foodie. Just bring her the business. And isn't it interesting that all this stuff has happened with Chantal? She's back in Canada and there's a feeling of something beyond her control happen. Like this trip to Canada was not something she wanted to do. It was a have to thing. But let's listen to what uh, Are You Serious has to say. I have a theory that I haven't heard yet, guys. I think he paid her to leave. I do. I think, I mean, she will not end a relationship on her own. She basically has to be shamed, embarrassed, and pushed out. And I think, you know, he cheated. I mean, call it what you want. To me, it's cheating, right? I mean, you know, I worship your ass more than my family. Yeah, that's that's not okay. I wouldn't just, you know, pretend that never happened. No, no. And, um... I think he's probably done other things that have really like no other woman would tolerate. And maybe there is a second wife. Okay. And his family is just like, listen, can you go? Can you just go back to Canada? Like he's not even living here. He doesn't even want to be with you. Your contract ended. Can you just go? Can you just leave? Leave us alone. And she was like, well, I don't have any money. And I don't know what I'm going to do this is my YouTube channel. And they were like, look, we'll give you 10K. Get out of here. She comes back. She has her car fixed. $2,000, she said, to have her Kia fixed. She went out and got a whole new wardrobe, she said. And now she's looking for an apartment and thinking about how to furnish it. That's a really interesting theory are you serious and what's even more interesting is i keep thinking back to neo tarot's reading and at the very end of the reading she pulled some last cards out of the deck and something about foodie saying she wanted a fair deal like the, she was going to be approached and it's she was all about I want to get a fair deal. So let's think back even further. There was talk about when Foodie went to Kuwait. Was it she? Like she paid Salah like $9,000, $10,000, right? For something. So could the fair deal be that if she paid that amount of money, that they gave her the money back just to make her go away? Just to cut ties? I don't know. I don't know. But I again, I watching Foodie, you're absolutely right. She's not a person that she's going to let go of a man willingly. She She's not. She, she likes to hold on to people for, for her own use. So if the family approached her and said, look, we'll just pay you, get out of here. It, it, she's got money in pocket. So, but she doesn't want to do any adulting. But I, I feel something happened. I did a tarot reading today. And the judgment card popped up the first card. Like something happened. Like the, the hammer came down in some way. Something beyond her control something that completely outranked her and she had to get out of there. But that is a very interesting theory. And thank you for posting that day-to-day -day, Ray. And are you serious? Uh, this is from Christy saying foodie beauty doesn't care about anyone else, but herself. 
If she wrecks, she, then she will call and endanger others to make them go and respond to her accident. Then she'll rage at responders for taking too long. She's just a vile idiot. So this has to do with the earlier stream. I guess right now in Canada, they're having some really nasty weather, a snowstorm. Uh, Malarkey Meter posted this earlier. With the bad storm happening in southern Ontario right now, we're being told not to go out unless necessary. Multiple accidents and power outages, crews and EMTs working overtime. And here she is. She doesn't have to go out, but she's going to go out. So you're putting yourself at risk for getting stuck, foodie. And you're just going to make more work for people that have to rescue you out of whatever mess you put yourself in. Uh, this is all from Dell. Uh, it looks like it's from Kiwi Farms. To be noted, in Chin's Morning Coffee Bees live stream from this AM, she only had 781 views total after she got off the live. It's already a far cry from the 2K participants she had just yesterday in her first I'm Back in Canada live stream. Yeah, so I guess the, the interest is waning. Everybody thought when she got back to Canada, she would hit the ground running and it would, it would be interesting again. But she keeps dropping the ball. She's in Canada. There's a variety of things she could do in Canada to keep us interested. She's not doing anything. And she's still insisting on hanging on to this fake phony persona that is not her. She's not dropping any tea. She's not raging. She's lying to her audience. She's trying to scam people out of money and is turning a lot of people off from her, even more so than normal. Uh, Mr. Michael B. Petty says, remember when Foodie Beauty was lying about a family friend letting her love or live in a mansion with a mirrored content room all in an effort to lure Natter back from Dee Dee? That lie was so hilarious. Yeah, it was. I remember the back and forth. Oh, I'm going to get into a mansion with a coffee bar. And they love me so much. They actually installed mirrors for me. <laughs> yeah, I remember the line that went on. Okay, here's an interesting thing from Kelly saying, do you think we're stupid? Do you think we're stupid, foodie? Do you really? She's doing a lot of the nose blowing now. She's back in Canada. That's something she used to do back at the villa when she was seeing Natter and doing tremendous amounts of Coca-Cola. Uh, but let's play the clip. Sorry about the nasty noises. Yeah, this was a constant thing. She was seeing Natter doing the Coca-Cola always blowing her nose. She was so bold that she would sometimes do the Coca-Cola right there with the stream running. She would turn the camera ever so slightly away, but you could hear her sniffing. And then when people called her out for it, she started going to the bathroom to do it. And you could still hear her sniffing. And then when she got called out further on that, she turned the water on. And then she would mute the stream. But this was a constant thing for her. I'll probably forever be blowing it on camera because of the fact that I... Yep, and back to that again. We're back to that again. And I have noticed something. Chantal, she's hyper fixated on food. Is she not? So the streams that I've seen of her, she's not eating very much. I can only think of one time period where she wasn't gorging on the food 24-7. That's when she was with Natter and she was on the Coca-Cola. She's got a very powerful issue with food. So it takes something equally powerful to have her not eat. It would take a powerful substance or stimulant to short circuit those thoughts of food. And the only thing that I've seen is Coca-Cola. Tons of Coca-Cola. You know, when you drink something caffeinated or you smoke cigarettes or you take a stimulant, that cuts your hunger. 
So she's more alert than she ever was in Kuwait. She's blowing her nose. She's hyper. It, it's really pointing in one direction. It's not from healthy food. It's not from healthy living. It, it, it feels like something else, y'all. Sorry, sorry, I'm gross. Sorry about that, but that was needed for the comparison about how she was in, in, in the villa versus now. Mo translates, says, how much time is Chantal going to waste going back and forth between Canada and Kuwait because she wants to avoid any responsibilities? At the first sight of any real work, she immediately wants to run. Girl, stop wasting time and money and get your crap together. She doesn't like adulthood. She doesn't like adulting. She wants to run back to Kuwait and let Salah take control. Although he has been the ruination of her channel. She wants someone else to take on all the hard labor. Chantal, you had to know. The moment you went to Kuwait the first time, at some point you were going to get kicked out or you had to leave and couldn't go back. You, you knew this time was going to come, but you decided to pull up all of your roots. You, you didn't save any money back for a plan B. And then you're going to expect the general public to pay up their money to fix all of your bad choices. That's it's so incorrect. It's time to grow up now. It really is. And I love this from Ice-T. Disrespect will close doors that apologies can't open. Be careful how you treat people you think you don't need. Yeah, that's a lesson she never learned, unfortunately. <laughs> I love this picture from Why You Should Have a Cat. <laughs> okay, that's it for the Twitter stuff. So let's get into the live stream, shall we? Okay, we just got stop the screen and share the screen with Chantal. And I'll, I'll free, forewarn you guys, there's a lot of whining here. She whines a lot, complaining about adulthood. Oh, woe is me. Chantal, my sad, tiny violins are put away for the night. So I'm not going to whip them out for you. You don't deserve them anyway. <laughs> Booger, what are you doing? But uh, let's just cover some of this, shall we? Let's go. Oh, hi, in Arabic. Lisa P., Caroline. Hi, Tracy. Pink Pony Club. Lynn, audio is fixed. Yeah, I didn't have to put anything in rice. I don't know what happened. You know, hey, beezers. Yes, let's bees. Eh, Lady Lugosi. Hello. No, we're not iftar beezing. Gemma, hello. The weather's crappy. Us too. Hey, creepy. Tangerine. Yeah, the solar eclipse, I am able to. Hi, Ghostface. Pam Anderson. I might buy some eclipse glasses. Yes. I've never seen a solar eclipse. The snow is beautiful. <laughs> Hi, Cynthia. Reginald Dahl. No, not really anything fun today. Well, I talked to you guys. That's always fun. You can see my hair. Yeah, thank you for letting me know. Because even with my glasses, I can't see you know, Chantal, you're making it more and more obvious that you, you're kind of done with Kuwait and you're done with Salah. You know, you're, you're making a point to pull the hijab back further and further to show more of your face. You're showing your hair. You're showing your chins. Just take it off already. You're in Canada. You're on your home soil. Just be your authentic self, whatever that is. Just drop this whole facade, okay? It, it It's not working for you. Sorry about that. 
mishaps happen. <laughs> Brooke. Brooke says, I'm sorry, but can you do something besides sit in your car? I know, right? She's got access to all of Canada. And yes, I'm taking into account that the weather's really bad. But she can't show us a different location. It's the same one every time. And it doesn't even look safe. Like if something happened that she could get help really quick. What is this place and why does she keep going there? Rather the cold and the heat in Kuwait. I know what you mean. I can't right now. That's the problem. Oh, yes, you could. Coffee bees. We'll have another coffee right now. You saw the last eclipse? Yeah, okay. No, Jenna, I'm married. I'm married. You know, I don't want to hear this nonsense from her. Like, I can't stream anywhere else. And I don't know what to do. She could easily rent a motel room. Even a cheap, nasty one. She can still rent a room. And bees out of that sucker all night long. If she wanted to. So why isn't she? It has to do with her ego. With Chantal, everything has to be grandiose. It has to be larger than life. It just She doesn't want to eat humble pie or admit that she's going through hard times or that she's struggling. It's all about her public image of I'm doing better than you and I've got more money than you. Chantal, you've already broken that image. The moment you're you're getting on YouTube and you're begging for other people's money, saying send stuff through my PayPal and please buy stuff off my wish list, talking about going to Goodwill and getting a coat. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with shopping at Goodwill. I love thrift stores, love the Goodwill, but you could easily get a motel room for just a night. And, and bees all day, all night in that sucker. So why aren't you? I mean, I showed you one option. You may not want to take it because there's other people around, but still. You can't get a motel room for at least a couple of nights and just let it all hang out? What are our glasses? Because I need them. I've needed glasses, new glasses for a while. So, hi, Mike. Routine. Why are you guys asking me questions? No. Hi, Louise. Um, yeah, I did go in the, to the apartment, yeah. What's for dinner? Nothing. I'm very tired. Do not use Roman for your moving truck needs. You know, I'm. she says she's tired, but one thing I'm noticing also, I remember the foodie back in Kuwait where she looked tired. She looked exhausted. She doesn't look tired here to me. She looks like she's wide awake. I don't see her yawning and she's over there drinking tons of coffee. How could she possibly be tired? <laughs> That's right. He had a moving like truck or something. Eh? I remember that. Am I sad? I'm a, like a mix of emotions. Maybe I just want to talk about, like, I feel like. But you know what, Chantal? YouTube is not. We aren't your therapists. The people in your chat are not your therapist. And they're not your dumping ground for all of your nonsense either. I'm sure there are people in your chat. They've got their issues. They've got their personal problems. They've got their worries and their stresses. Do you ever ask your audience how they're doing? You know, let it go both ways versus one way. You get online and you whine and you cry about your life. 
but <laughs> I'm sure there are people in your own chat that are, they're going through it. They've got more severe problems than you. They've got more severe worries than you do. Can you imagine walking in a room with real people and whining and crying about your problems? How ridiculous you would sound. Oh, I'm a YouTuber. And once upon a time, I made 20 grand a month. And I didn't put any away. And I spent it all on food and junk and Amazon boxes. And woe is me. You know how you would get some looks from the other people in the room. They'd be like, are you serious? You got a YouTube channel and you were making that kind of money and you've got bankruptcies and debts and bad credit and your money is in the toilet because all you had to do was just do some interesting content once in a while and you didn't do it. You know how they would look at you? They would look at you like you were stupid because you are stupid. You have no reason to complain. Without getting too personal, you know, but if I could describe the level of conflict that I feel inside myself, AMC, happy belated birthday. Thank you, AMC. That's nice of you. Thank you. Cute cat. Dang it. It's Masa Oh, sorry. I'll have to um, edit it after. Are you aware of any court cases? No. Against me? Hi, Mike. Yeah, it is. Buy a new car. <laughs> no, I just, it's. I don't know. Like, I'm staying here. Don't worry about it. But I'm, I'm very. Sometimes, not always. Sometimes I get sad. I don't know. Eh, I can't roll up my window. I'm going to have to figure out, like. How to make my life productive and fulfilling here. Degrassi. Hi, Michelle. Never told us what you did for your birthday. Um, I'm sure you can guess what I had to eat. We went out for dinner. And uh, just watched movies. Hi, PMAC. So Gemma says, honestly, you didn't seem that happy in Kuwait. No, she didn't. She was absolutely miserable. Just in the short amount of time she's been back to Canada, she looks happier, more relaxed. No, it's not. Well, it's not better than the villa. But passenger princess. Yeah, I do, actually. I do. This is really hard being in a long distance relationship, like really bad. Paneer, no. It's not a facade. What makes you say that? Like seriously, like I don't understand the grounds. It's real, I miss my family over there. Of course I do, I spent like an, a year and a half getting used to that. So, I don't think she misses Salah or the cats. I think she just liked being in an environment where she didn't have to do any kind of adulting. She could just sit in the apartment, do her mukbangs. The Salah paid the rent with her money. He got the takeout for her. She didn't have to worry about anything. Now that she's back in Canada, she has to do some adulting and she don't like it. But at the same time, I recognize, like, I need to be here right now. So, what can I do? Grow up. Is the audio bad again? Britt, I don't know. Hi, Melissa. Yeah, talk about nice. Distance makes the heart grow fonder. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> Mexican pizza. Thanks, KDW. God, stop screeching. Oh, fine. Okay, so now you trolls can stop saying it's bad audio, okay? I'm just joking. 
I hate when she does that. I'll adjust the volume to her voice level and then she screeches like that. So I am so sorry to anybody on my channel with the headphones and the earbuds. Uh, what am I going to do? It's Chantal. I can't breathe. My anxiety is always bad. I don't know what it is. There's a certain level of like um like things you don't have to worry about over there, you know. Anyway, hi Isla. Or is it Isla? I don't miss the snow. Hi, this guy just went in his car, rolled up all the wood, like his windows are rolled up and he's light he light he lit a dart. Yes, we're gonna bees. Always smile. What is beezing? What are we gonna do to bees? Hi, nose for a tooth. How old is Sam, anyways? Oh yeah. Yeah, let's talk about that bee stuff for a minute. <laughs> Anybody on Chantal's side of the fence that you are waiting for her to bees? Beezing means misbehaving, and that's Chantal code for. I'm going to go ham with the food or I might go ham with the party favors. But here's a situation. She's in her car. She does not have a home base yet where she can go wild either way and be in her own private space. So until she gets a private space, no hardcore beezing. <laughs> you know, like... I don't know what's going on with her. I suspect that her family lets her sleep on the couch at night. So she has a safe place to sleep. But then in the morning, she's got to get up and get out of the house. She is in her car all day. Not really the optimal place for beezing. So if you're waiting around for Chantal to, you know, go wild. It's not going to happen until she gets her own space. Yeah. I can't ever leave here without Sam. Poor Sam. What? Why not? You left to go to Kuwait the first time without Sam. And he's been without you for, what, two years now? You left BBJ and Sam behind. As a matter of fact, going back in time in my head, as I remember it, even though Sam was the male cat and he was your favorite. You gave Sam away and you basically threw yourself a pizza party. You weren't sad. You weren't sad about giving either of your cats away. Now you're expect, ex, you are expressing sadness. It's a little too late. It really is a little too late. And wherever Sam may be, he's in a better place around better people that can take care of him, that are making sure he's fed, he's getting medical care, going to the vet. These were all things that you did not provide. And if you had any kind of care for Sam, even as his former owner, you would leave him where he's at. It, he's adjusted to where he is and uprooting him would be a heartless thing to do. You don't know what's going on with you. You don't know where you're going to end up. You don't know what your money situation is going to look like. Your health is all up in the air. Something medical could happen to you tomorrow. And if that happens, what's going to happen to any pet that you get in your care at this time? They might be out on the street or sent to a shelter. Don't have pets around right now, Chantal. Any pets, former pets or new pets, none. You can't take care of yourself. Don't bring something else around you that will depend on you. You can't even depend on you. I wonder if he'll remember me. <laughs> Making music about your current sadness. Yeah, I guess. Luxillian Diva, I had to pop in to show some love. I pray your day as well. I'm loving the glasses, girl. I hope all is well with you, lovely chatters as well. I'm about to eat and watch some gaming. Enjoy, Black Zillion. Thanks for coming in here and saying hey. <laughs>
my day's okay. Off and on, you know. I'm tired. Which gaming do you watch? Sam can come with me anytime, you know. Um, that I get a place. Fans Peaser! Oh my gosh, hey! What's new? Welcome back, welcome back. <laughs> 10 years, Lisa? <laughs> Off of the Nintendo. Sam will go crazy, you think so? I don't have a winter coat. It's hard seeing pictures of like Salah and Julia and Howie. <laughs> but it's also hard without, you know, things here. So I don't know what to do. So yeah, I'm you, you know what your problem is, Chantal? You want to have your cake and eat it too right now you wouldn't have any desire to be back in Kuwait I think the only reason why you want to go back to Kuwait is because he's there although he has no attachment to you he couldn't stand you what is this I hear about when the two of you were out in public he would walk several feet either into behind or in front of you like he didn't even know you that doesn't sound like a loving relationship to me. And what also is it that I hear that the two of you, when you laid in bed together, you, you wouldn't lay in the same direction. You would lay with his feet next to your face. Kind of weird. R really, really weird. But uh, you're, you're wishing and you're missing a man it obviously does not miss you. When you went home to Canada the last time, he was already redoing the apartment. Talking to other women on the phone, he wanted you out of the picture. Home? Yeah. No cat will forget my ways. Just stop. Will you show us Sam when you get him back? Duh. Hi, Teardrop! Okay, have a good night, uh, Blexillion. Hey, Ted! We're all running catnip. Yeah, I have to focus. I really, yeah, you're right. I gave it away, A+. Plus. I'm not- Does it look like Thailand? Hi, Bailey Brooke! You need cat stuff now. Yeah. I need an 4XL cat litter box. So are my teeth are going to be all kernely and brown. Just Sam, why do you need a plus size litter box? Why, Sam? Doesn't feel like my own sometimes. Yeah, that's probably fans. Beezer, welcome to my worship bees. Welcome back, fans. Beezer, good to have you back. <laughs> I'm just warning you, Lay, that's all. I also want to toss this in here really quick. For those that just need to know this. I don't know if Chantal is doing party favors. She talked about going to the dispensary. And spending money on green, at least. She did say that. So here's my thought. Listen. When you're broke or you're near broke, you're thinking about the necessities, the essentials. You don't have money for anything you want. It's about what you need, but you need to survive and to take care of yourself. So if Chantal's got money to go to the green shop and get whatever, then it would stand to reason she really doesn't need money for stuff for her apartment, does she? No, I don't think so. Because that stuff would come first, right? If you're looking at a situation where 
you're back in your home state, you don't have a home, you don't know what you're going to do, you need to set up something solid, that's where your money's going to go. You don't have time or money to bees. So I think she's got a lot of nerve. Sit there and talk about beesing. Talk about getting the green, the medicinal green. And then go into the general public and saying, oh, by the way, here's my Amazon wish list. Can you get me some stuff on my wish list? Even though I don't have a home yet and there's no guarantee that I will. And I've got a bad track record for lying to you guys and scamming you. Go ahead and get stuff anyway. This feels like a cash grab, like a severe grift out of desperation. She's just out to get anything she can out of anybody who will give it to her. I don't know what she has on her wish list, but if there's stuff on there that people can buy for her, that she can return and get a refund and get the money equivalent, she'll probably do that. Unless it's food, she'll eat the food. But anything that's not food that she can turn around and sell, she'll probably go that route. Unless it's something like Amazon gift cards, which then she can turn around and spend on food. But uh, don't believe Chantal about, you know, I'm getting, I'm getting into a house and I put down a deposit. Don't believe her until we see her actually in the place. I'll believe her then, not before. We've been, through, we've been through this before with Chantal. The whole talk about her getting into the mansion and coffee bar and the mirrored room and that never happened. She said it was a mansion, then Pete's snitched on her and said, oh, it's not a mansion, it's just a regular house, but it never happened. what july feels like i know i don't want to be in look at my i want to free the chin there we go i don't want to be in the hottest country in the summer this is not working out so she's she's put herself in a bit of a pickle she doesn't want to go to kuwait because it's too hot but yet she wants to be there because salah is there on the other hand if Salah were to come to Canada, she wouldn't like that either because he would have far too much freedom and we know what he would do with it. She'd lose him in a heartbeat. She wants to keep him in a situation where he doesn't have as much freedom, yet she's not there. <laughs> so to bring him where she's at, he would get more freedom and then he'd be gone forever. So what to do, what to do, right, Chantal? You think it's been Coney? Hey, Chantal, hey, Chantal, how are you? How are you, C-Mills? Shut up, lady. Tracy's coming for blood. What is this live? A really big life crisis. Cookie oat latte. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, doing simple adulting is not a life crisis. It's just... Life telling you, you got to grow up now. You can't keep running from your issues. You can't keep running from your problems. You've got to grow up now. It's no one's responsibility to take care of you, Chantal. You're not a child. You are an adult. It's not your audience's responsibility to take care of you. To pay for your stuff, to buy stuff for your house, that's all on you. Like you've got a lot of work to do, but you're expecting other people to do the work. That's good, eh? Head jobs are warm, yeah. Jessica, no, I miss, miss my So Jessica says every stream is just you being depressed about Kuwait. Do you really miss the scorching heat and never leaving your apartment? She just she just wants to whine. That's all she wants to do. She wants to whine. My husband and my pets. That's probably about it. And there's like little things, but. Anyway. 
I'll um I'll be all right. Oh, by the way, Tea Time Witch says try being in Florida during the summertime. Yeah, buddy. I used to live there. Tea Time Witch ain't lying. <laughs> you know. <laughs> the, the Florida summers are no joke. That humidity will kill you. It it's like I, I'm not even joking. The heat is insane. The humidity is just off the chart. You feel like you're walking around in a sauna and can't get out of it. It's so bad that if it gets hot enough, you can be in your apartment, take a shower, nice cool shower, get cleaned off, and within five minutes be covered in sweat again. It's just that bad. It's horrible. So like I, I second the whole Florida summer heat being bad. Been there, did that. Don't miss it. Look, my live streams can't be very eventful until I just establish a life here. Yeah, so get on it. What are you waiting for? You're doing like three or four live streams a day and not saying much. Get on it. Work something out. Go get a motel room rent by the week. That'll be a temporary home base. You can bees all you want that way. Why haven't you gotten on that? I just need everyone to be patient. Please. <laughs> Do a loose scrap look. These are you weren't built for 140 degree heat. <laughs> I didn't even care about that. I was like, no way, man. I'm going. Do you think it's appropriate to constantly film yourself? I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Maybe I shouldn't, but. People do long distance. It's not that unusual. Yeah, but oh, you think so? Gemma 420. What can very important be to reshape me? Ow. <laughs> Sorry for the whining. God, she's um, so annoying in this. Between the whining and the, the screeching, you are extra annoying in this live stream, Chantal. What did you take? Did you, did you, what party favor did you consume? Is it the caffeine, all the coffee? I don't know what it is, but you need to tone it down. I'll tell you this much, though. If your butt goes back over to Kuwait, your channel's done for. People are people are already hanging on. They're, they're hanging on by a thread. People can't take another round of severe boredom. They just, they're not going to. They're, they're not going to stand for it. Yeah, so he's not a scammer. I literally have nothing to offer him to scam me for. Just my love. <laughs> you know when you establish, you might look at people and say, what an odd couple. Never never judge that because, you know, you know those little things you have with someone that are like, like little special stupid things, you know? Like the cute little things you have in relationships. I miss those things. Maybe, Grace. I think you can come on a tourist visa, yeah. But he ain't going to. <laughs> Hi, Juan Mate. Jim Carrey called me the cheese one. Are you seriously going back to Kuwait? No, I'm not. Hi, Emila. Hey, Wheezy. We did long distance. How long distance did you do? I was like a caged bird, but nobody was forcing me to stay inside. I was isolating myself. It's not like so Salah locked me in the apartment and was like, you know, anything I wanted to do, he would do it. It's just, my health is not good. I don't want to do anything. How can I keep up with any kind of life? So I have to try to get healthy, that's all. <laughs> Teardrop. I haven't cut my hair in a while. Hi, Colleen. No, I said he did in Jenna.
Of course, like, of course that will always be in my mind, but, like, I don't, I can't live that way, so no. People act like you went out all the time before. You're always a homebody. Yeah. You're a Aries. <laughs> So Teddy Bear says, you keep saying your health and you want to get healthy for over a year now. What steps are you taking to do that? None. None. She's not taking any steps at all. Hmm. Maybe would you have... Hi, Bubbles. I'm not taking any steps right now. <laughs> Told you. So. <laughs> None. No steps to take care of her mental health, her emotional health, her physical health. No steps, y'all. None. She came back to Canada to take care of her health, but she's not taking care of it. So Brenda says, you bees outside every day in Canada. But in Kuwait, you often didn't leave the apartment for weeks. Well, that's because she has no home base in Canada. To do her mukbangs or anything, she might be staying with mom and they kick her out of the house during the day and she has to do stuff from her car. <laughs> so she has to leave. It's, it's always a have-to situation with Chantal. If you see her out of a house, it's because she has to get out. Not because she wanted to go out. Mm. I'm Aladi. Welcome, Salam. How are you? I'm good. Yeah, sometimes I didn't leave for a while. Like, not for big things or to do fun things. And it's going to be too hot. But I don't know. But yeah, it is hard to get into a doctor here. Yeah. Yeah, I'm still doing cameos. Um, so somebody's asking, are you still going to be playing games on Twitch? No, <laughs> no. How could she gonna play play games on Twitch if she doesn't have a setup right now? She just got her phone. I mean, there's a lot that she could do with her phone, but I, I just don't see how she can do the Twitch thing and, like, and and be streaming out of her car at night. I just I can't see it. Toby, Toby, Michael. I have no idea who that is. <sighs> Someone should be faithful no matter what. Yes. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Vanessa. Yeah. <laughs> now we're starting that yawning nonsense again. <laughs> Z. Yeah. Oh, what's this? This person, Richard Proanos. <laughs> okay. Richard says, Pete said you are going to visit him. He said live yesterday. So I guess they're trying to say that Pete said in his live yesterday that Chantal's going to go visit Pete's. So are you talking to Pete's again, Chantal? You're trying to find a partner to move in with because you need a caretaker? Or you need someone with better credit than you? My male guy. Hi, Curious Georgie. Be careful this month. Yeah. I know. Hey, Stanley. 
human can opener. That's hilarious. Hey, Breezeth. Yeah, it is scary. Hi, Jack. It's not a Mika marriage. <gasps> back and forth and back and forth. But I can't decide, like, you know. <sighs> Me neither, teardrop. I don't know. You know, Chantal, I knew that when you got back to Canada, that you would hit the ground running after this week long break. I had a feeling that you would show up back in Canada and you did. And if you did, due to the fact that you missed out on so much money, you would have to hit the ground running. Well, you arrived in Canada. That didn't happen. You're doing much the same content that you did when you were in Kuwait. You got a lot of money to make for a lot of different reasons. If you got to get into a place, you got to have first and last months. Security deposit, possibly pet deposit. I hope that you don't get a pet. You need a lot of money. We're talking like five, six, seven grand. Easy. This is not going to get it done. Your content has been boring for so long. And everybody's been wanting you to get back to Canada and just be yourself. You don't have to do chemicals. You don't have to get high. You don't have to destroy your health with food like you usually do. But you need to find something interesting. You got to get away from the same old, same old. Because this is, this is the same old, same old right here. This is boring. Straight up. Boring. How many streams have you done so far? You sitting in your car. You're not really talking about anything. You're not giving us any new information. We're not seeing any new sites. Bleh. It's just, it, this is so bad. Like you got a spike in views when you first came back, but you're losing the edge because you're not doing anything. Yeah. Give it at least a month. Like, nobody wants to listen to a 40-year-old woman whine and cry over adulting over and over and over again. It is not flattering. It's not sexy. Like, we don't want to hear about your BS. Got it? Because I'm sure everybody that watches you, whether it's in your audience, girl world, reactor, we got our own stuff going on. You're an entitled brat. You've been coddled by your family, coddled by YouTube. You've had the easy life for way too long to the point where you're burnt out on your entitlement. You don't appreciate anything. We don't want to hear it. Wah, wah, wah. Oh, my life is so hard because I made a whole bunch of bad choices. And now I have to face the consequences of my actions. Well, like, how does it feel to suck? Yeah, because, I mean, the summer over there, not good. Sorry, I have an itchy nose. Yeah, he's staying there. Hi, Cassidy. Like, a lot of people are in chat or suggesting Airbnbs, but don't you need a credit card for that? Good credit, I think. I think so. I think. 
I want to rent a room. I don't think that's going to happen. Chantal likes her privacy. Can, can you imagine her renting a room in somebody's house? That's not going to fly. She keeps weird hours. She likes to be up from like midnight until eight in the morning. Whoever owns that house would not be cool with that. Her being up screeching and yelling and talking about beezing at 3 a.m., no, that's not going to work. Definitely not going to work. And how are you going to rent a room in a house and bring your pet? That's not going to work either. She would not be comfortable with the idea of being in somebody else's house and she just has a single room. You know what? I, I'm thinking about something right now, y'all. I'm thinking about how when she lived at the villa with Pete and she got deep in a natter, she would go to the park and she would talk about Pete and she would say, oh, I can get him a room and he could just rent a room and be so good for him. <laughs> oh, if that happened to her, that would be great. That would be so great. Although I would not wish that upon any person that owned any house. I would not wish Chantal upon them. She's too much. Yeah. Anyway. And people like this person, Richard says, well, you move in with Pete's again. He has a nice place. Not really. He's renting a room. I know he wants to be with Chantal, but the smartest thing for him would be to stay where he's at. Like, she's not reliable. She's not. She's not reliable with her money right now. She's not reliable with her health. What if something medical happened to Chantal? Let's just say Pete's did move in with Chantal. He went all in with her. What if something medical happened to her and she ends up in the hospital? And she can't pay her share of the rent. Then the room that he did have where he's at, he, he might lose it. I don't want to be depressing again. My tin has vacancies. Ew, there was barf. Lady Pappy, hello. Thank you. Don't cry. Stop complaining at Chantal. Thanks for the super chat. Motel 6. <laughs> yeah right yeah how about that why don't you get a motel six room chantal remember how you used to rag on the motel six i bet you wish you had a motel six room right about now don't you if for nothing else so you can bees but you don't have one do you yeah that, that'll teach you to shut your mouth about the motel six The deep age is missing. <laughs> I don't know what I need. I, there's something missing, but it's not. I don't know. I'm just like, no matter what situation I'm in, I'm, there's always something missing. I don't know, creature comfort. I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know. I'm sick of this psychiatric crap. I just want to, like, you know, be more settled. But I have to pick, before I can do any hard work, I have to be consistent on what I want. Like, I can't keep changing the course. Like, how can I master anything in my life that way? Hi, Blondie Barso. Too cool says, you keep trying to run away from your problems, but then realize it's you. Sorry, just saying. Yeah, like wherever you go, there you are. If, if you got problems in here or in here, wherever you go in the world, they're going to follow you. So 
maybe instead of running from yourself, face yourself. Just stand still and say, I've, I've, I've got a bunch of baggage inside. I need to unpack it. I need to look at it. I need to clean it. I need to just declutter myself. Put things in order. That way I can travel and I can do things and I will feel lighter and I can move faster and I can do more. Like she, she's always running from herself though, dude. No. Yeah, but what is it about me? That's what I can figure out too cool. It's supposed to be on the 18th, my therapy session. Get a motor home. A time to be born, a time to bees, a time to bees, and a time to bees. Yeah, people in our chat are, are suggesting getting a motor home or an RV or something like that. <laughs> Y'all can see right now, I am I'm in a trailer. It it's it's different. It's it's a little bit harder than normal. Certain things you gotta look out for. I don't think Chantal's cut out for it. It just too much responsibility. Too many things you have to consider. Too many things you gotta you, you gotta watch out for. She could do it. Yeah, SUP. <laughs> no, I have a lot of friends. I don't have enough. I don't make enough time for any of them. <laughs> for real. I love this. There are people in her chat talking about dank fupa. <laughs> Z says, did you watch the dank fupa videos? I have, and I loved every single one of them. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate myself. I don't know what's wrong. I just thought maybe I don't have like faith in myself. I don't know. Anyway, well, thanks, Kim Richards. Are you done with all you know, this? Respect that uh, you know, my my husband and the person I love. You know, even if like you don't like him, then you know, still it's still a respectful thing. Like. I don't know. It's like, hi, Lynn. Lady J. But, um, yeah. So I'm, I'm just, I just go through these emotions, like, and I don't know, like, what, how I'm going to feel when I go live. So sorry. Like, I just feel really torn, really sad. A lot of people have B, BD. I don't know. Don't diagnose me. Who knows? Thanks for the super chat. Thank you, Reginald. So I don't know. Boy, she's really sucking down that coffee. <laughs> oh, that that. Oh, that morning. Oh. Chantal, you are 40 years old, girl. What is wrong with you? You are not a child. You're not a five-year-old. Why are you, why do you talk and why do you sound like a child? This, it drives me nuts. Where did this whining thing even come from? What started all of this? Did you do it because you thought it was cute around Salah? It's not cute. You're 40 now. You can stop now. Seriously, quit. On impulse, yep. Oh, gee. No, I did think about it for a while. I'm, I'm going to be okay. I'm just, it's just hard. That's all. 
I'll come to my senses, don't worry. It's hard when I see like pictures of them and, and they send me pictures of we video. And then after I'm all depressed, <laughs> you know. Go home, make a plan, take action, yeah. Yeah, like I can't be, yeah, I can't be fully happy in either. I'll tell you what, if she goes to the dispensary, if she dares to get on camera with a bag of things from the dispensary, anybody that's even considering buying stuff off her wish list, I hope you take that into consideration. That if she's got money to go to the dispensary and get that kind of stuff, she could have taken that money and bought stuff off her own wish list. If she cares, she'll do it. People who are broke can't go to a dispensary. It's just, it, it can't happen. So keep a watch out for that. If she's over there going nuts with the food, and if she's going nuts with the dispensary visits, obviously, financially, she's fine. Because she's not spending her money where it needs to go. She's spending it on her wants versus her needs. It's weird. Like, I can't be fully happy here, and I can't be fully happy there. There's You're not happy anywhere. Let's go back in time for a minute, y'all. Let's go all the way back. Back to when Foodie was with Natter, and she went to Cuba. She said in Cuba, I have so much money. I have so much money, and it doesn't make me happy. She was, you know, making 20, 30K a month. For a few months. Big paychecks. Had all kinds of money. Could do whatever she wanted with it. She made all the wrong choices with that money. She wasn't happy. She used the money and the access to the money. To distract herself. From things that she really should have been taking care of. But then she went to Kuwait. And she didn't have as much money. And that didn't make her happy either. So it's like, what makes this woman happy? She's never going to be happy if she doesn't know what she wants. If she doesn't know who she is. If she's always changing her personality based on whatever guy she's around. You know, putting on different personas like you would put on costumes in a school play. Versus finding out who she really is and sticking with that. It's just, it's, it's chasing her own tail. You're never going to find happiness if you don't know who you are, Foodie. Things I'm missing in each situation. Like, and yeah. <laughs> Teardrop. Hmm. Health arc was supposed to be it, yeah. Get addicted to exercise. <laughs> uh, have two bases, one here, one there. I'm afraid being apart that we're going to forget each other. Oh, girl, he's already forgotten you. You got to know he's he's in the red room right now as we speak. <laughs> he's in the red room right now. Playing songs, singing, dancing. He's living it up. Maybe that eats you up inside. Him having fun without you. Or something. I can't, like... Sam will cheer me up. Oh my gosh. One more to me. When Sam coming back? Whenever I have my place, when I move into my new place, 
Uh, you know what, Chantal? Don't talk about it. Be about it. In the meantime, get a temporary home base. Get a motel room. Get a hostel room. Do your beezing from there. You know, get, get a change of scenery. That way you're not like just sequestered in the car in the middle of nowhere. It's meant to be, it will be. That's true. It's a lot if you bring him here or there. I can't travel with Sam. I keep thinking how I can do it. Like, I can't imagine how arduous the travel is. And then having. Stop right there. You don't care about your former pets. You don't care. You just, you just don't care. Leave Sam alone. Stop bringing up his name. Stop bringing up BBJ. You surrendered your pets to other people. Before that, you neglected them. They are where they need to be. And they're being taken care of. As their former owner, if you really, really love them, that should give you comfort knowing that they are being taken care of and they're going to go live on and live well. That should bring you a sense of peace that even though you're not there, someone else is, they're, they're grabbing the brass ring and they're running with it. They're, they're, they're taking over the responsibilities and doing what needs to be done. You obviously can't do it. You don't want to do it. You, you let go of the both of them. You chose to let go. No take back, Chantal. You, you surrender BBJ, you surrender Sam. No take backs. You can't get them back now that other people have taken them on and they've, they've gone through the process of all the medical bills, all the vet visits. You, you can't do that. You can't just give somebody your pets and say, here, you pay all the bills, you do the vet visits, and then once they're all done, I'm going to get them back. No, it don't work like that. It just doesn't. And it's really disgusting that you're still trying to use your pets to suffice your own ego and for YouTube attention. It seems like you've got a nasty habit with that. You got Harry the hamster trying to use that poor hamster for money. Same thing with Julia. You can't just leave the pets alone to be pets. Having to worry about a 15 pound cat. He's a big boy. You like his tummy. If somebody does that, like, you know, if that ever happens again or anything like that sideways happens, that'll just be it. That's all. It just wasn't meant to be. Can you say hi to my girlfriend, Chris? She loves you. Kristen Marie. Hi, Chris. Oh, thank you. That means a lot. Lots of love. <laughs> like giving it Here we go. Blue Pots. <laughs> Blue Pot says, I don't know how you think you can take care of a grown man when you struggle with your own health and the mental health and such, right? You just might put stuff on your plate. You don't have to put on there. Another honest effort. And that's, you know, as far as it goes. So I don't worry about those hypothetical things, you know. People have eyes we can look. Yeah. I don't honestly, I don't do that. I don't care like anymore. I just want to live my, I just want to live like an old lady. And this person right here, Stephanie says... I don't think it's fair to say him if you're going to leave him again. Sorry. No, I don't think so either. Is leave him where he's at. Why will it always be Canada? Not necessarily. I don't want to live here forever. I don't. Ah, this person, Richard, says on the live last night. Pete says he still has feelings. We all knew that, didn't we? We all knew. 
He still loves her. He still cares for her. That's why he hasn't rolled on her. He knows all of her dirt. He won't talk because he loves Chantal. And he's always been waiting on her, waiting for her to come back, waiting to be with her again, waiting for her to get bored with whatever guy she puts her sights on. It's just, it's so sad. Pete's, I hope that one day you grow up and you see what a horrible person she is. Pete's isn't really a prize either. He, he's got some bad qualities, the way he treated BBJ. I want to have a talk with him in Minecraft about that. But he did love Chantal. And he's just holding on to the hope that she's going to come back and they're going to get a house together. And it's like, things will never be as they once were, ever. We both want to travel, but like that's the problem. We made this like whole plan, whole pact to travel and starting with Thailand. But It's like, how many times does she have to destroy your life, Pete, before you get it through your head? You are not her main anymore. As sick as she is, as disgusting as she is, she thinks that she deserves better than what she's, she's getting. Having a loyal man is not enough. Having a loving man is not enough. She wants Mr. Instagram model. Sorry, Pete, you don't look like that. She falls in love with her eyes. You were a flavor of the week one week, but that was a while ago. She's on the hunt for another one for the sake of stroking her own ego. And you're just a doormat that she wipes her feet on because you allow it. You're, you know, you're right. If you're healthy, you're not healthy. You can't do anything. I push myself a lot. Okay. Bad asthma. You don't have sciatica. Shut the F up about that. You don't have it. No, you don't. You got liatica. You don't have sciatica. They're different. And try one of those travel days. I'm telling you. Oh, my oh. And something else that somebody else pointed out, I'm like, you're right. So isn't it funny that when Chantal wants to get attention, she drags her foot when she walks. But isn't it also funny that it's amazing how that clears up. So in the airport, she wasn't really dragging her foot, was she? Wonder what happened. Funny how that clears up on its own. Oh my gosh. They will break you like anxiety wise <laughs> and just physically, it's so hard on the body. So, but I would enjoy it more. Like, I wouldn't have to worry. Like, imagine going to your airplane gate, not having to worry about, like, you know, if how who you're gonna sit beside, how fat you are. You could just fit in the seat, you know? Yeah, but you know what? To be fair, Chantal. You made the decision to get yourself to that size. Every single time you sat down and did a mukbang, you made that choice. You knew that your weight was increasing. You had to know that the, the food was a contributing factor and you chose to do that. So by sitting, what's going on with you is not like a medical issue out of your control. The food was completely within your control and you chose to overindulge, which led to you getting to a size that when you travel, you have to have two seats and a seatbelt extender and there's all this other stuff you have to deal with. These are the side effects of not taking care of your health. And I would think that would motivate you to get healthy, but it doesn't. You want the whole world to work around you Versus you working on yourself. So don't sit here and cry and whine to us about, you guys don't understand what it's like to be me. No, we don't. You're right. You're absolutely right. We don't understand. We can't relate. Because you're completely feral. A lot of us are not feral. We have our manners. We have our morals and our values. And we're not going to just sit there and get on camera and do self-harm content for money. 
That's something that a lot of us will not do. You know, we have lines you don't. You'll hurt yourself for profit. We, we would never. Can't relate to you. You chose to take that path on YouTube. And now you're paying the price for it. So I don't want to hear you whining. Nope. Not hearing it. Not here for it. Nothing to worry. That's like a huge worry right off of you. I don't know. I try not to worry about that stuff, but because like, who cares? You're never going to see that person again. You just, you know, <laughs> you did good for not feeling the best. Yeah. But thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I'm married. Okay, so this comment from Creepy Comfort in Crime, one of her mods, said, we want you to live, ma'am. Well, Creepy Comfort, maybe you do. Maybe a few other people in her chat do. But not everybody in her chat does. Anybody getting in her chat that you talk about food with her, obviously you're not interested in her good health. You know she's got issues with food. Food is one of her triggers. And if you keep flipping that switch, what do you think is going to happen? There are a lot of feeders in her chat that they, they deliberately trigger Chantal. <laughs> they do. And, uh, then she goes to town on the food and then what do you think is going to happen? But there are people in Chantal's chat that they want to see her live. But here's the problem, creepy. Even if there are people in Chantal's chat that want to see her live and go on. Chantal herself. She's making the choice to not live to not be healthy, to not take care of her body. So what you want and what she wants are kind of opposite, isn't it? Like it, it, she, she's the one in charge of herself. If, if she wants to make herself healthy, she can. She's got the time, the tools, the money, the resources. She's just choosing not to care. She's running towards death. She's not running towards life. So you guys can care all you want about wanting her to live. But it really boils down to if she wants to live. Mm. It's going to be a whole new person. Uh, put the blame on me. They love pets. They have medical stuff in a pool. Oh, boy. I can't see Chantal on a cruise. Can you? Too many people around. She wants a completely private space where nobody will stare at her or take pictures of her or put her on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, not going to happen. Thanks for the info. I don't know about that. Thank you. Thanks for the super chat. Uh, Morrissey, not really much anymore, Richard. You know what? She's oh, that's a great picture. That is awesome. I think I'll use that for my thumbnail. <laughs> All right, guys, that's it for this react. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, please like it, subscribe, and leave a comment. Thank you so much for being here, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.